Welcome to Drinking Bros Sports, brought to you by KillCliffCBD.com. Welcome to Drinking Bros Sports Companion Show. We got a hot show tonight, kids. We've got the GM for the Indianapolis Colts, Chris Ballard, with us. Mm -hmm. Is there a funner dude who's who's running an NFL team currently in the game today? No, that's just a fun city. I mean, they've got Ballard, they've got Jim Irsay, they've got Pat McAfee, <laughs> all in the same goddamn city there. Amazing, isn't yeah. it? Amazing. I, I had the good fortune of sitting next to Mr. Ballard at the LSU-Oklahoma game, and I said to him, hey, man, after the NFL draft is over, I'd love to have you on the show and discuss your draft mm -hmm. and what happened. We have a ton of Colts fans who were listeners on the show, and I, I was not expecting him to, to have a draft like this. Mm -hmm. Man, dude knocked it out of the park. An absolute home run. If you're a Colts fan, you should be amped about this year. Um, you'll see my prediction on the show here in a second. Uh, but first, Anthony, we got some sponsors to pay mm -hmm. for this whole shit wagon to be on the air. First and foremost, talking about KillCliffCBD.com. Is this it? Is this it, D'Anthony? Is this the, the gold chain that Tiffany came in screaming about in Ross Patterson Revolution today? Yeah. She, she was wondering if they're selling those things. I need, we're going to have to hire someone to keep these assholes from stealing my shit. Mm-hmm. Like my Felix Grey glasses. Everything. Thieved. Thieved. Uh, the Raycons. Thieved. Thieved. Everything. Our young producer, Alec, was like, dude, can I get a, a pair of Raycon headphones? And we were like, no, somebody's stolen them. Yeah. These are empty boxes here on the set. I feel fine saying that right now. I don't know who comes in and steals all of our sponsorship, but they do. I get it, man. I mean, shit. I would steal it, too, if it was lying around. Same with Kill Cliff CBD. Mm -hmm. We've got a fridge full of it, usually. Uh, then we have guests come in, and then they fucking take it. They swipe it all. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you're at home and you're <laughs> like, hey, man, how do I get Kill Cliff CBD sent to my house? Uh, go to KillCliffCBD.com. Promo code Drinking Bros will get you 30% off and free shipping. They have three amazing flavors. They got the mango, they got the grape, and they got the orange kush. I'm the grape guy. I got my That was my dad wanted for his birthday over the weekend. Yeah. I got him two cases. Mm -hmm. I used my own promo code. Um, you've got to use the promo code Drinking Bros right now to get the 30% off. It's going to end Monday, right after Mother's Day. It's going to go back to 20%. Yep. Use the promo code Drinking Bros to get 30% off a case right now. Knocks it down to like 250 a can. Here's the thing. You could get a can of Monster or, or some other bullshit energy drink. Or you can get a can of CBD with 25 milligrams in it uh, with no THC. Won't piss hot on any drug test. So if you're military or first responder, don't worry about it. Uh, you're fine on that. And it's a brand you can trust. You're not getting it from some weird head shop in whatever town you live in. Uh, you're getting it from Kill Cliff, a brand you trust. Go to KillCliffCBD.com today. Type in the promo code Drinking Bros for 30% off. In these quarantine times, you're going to need it around your family and your children. Next up, we got MacWeldon.com. They're new. Dan Anthony. Yeah, that's a new one. They're new. Uh, M-A-C-K-W-E-L-D-O-N. MacWeldon.com. Uh, that's it. That is the fucking brand. They make, they make the, the most uh, comfortable clothing on the planet. Yeah, it's say. like you've seen some of those. Uh, there's, there's some really nice... Uh, I don't know what you call it. What the? It's it's not accessories. It's just dude stuff. It's mm -hmm. like uh, it's like men's basic stuff. Yeah. It's so like uh, underwear and undershirts, socks, button downs. But they all yeah. They make button downs. They make hoodies. All this other stuff. It's the most comfortable shit on the there's planet. A, there's a couple of other companies that do this, but they are like prohibitively expensive. Yeah. Like it's it's ridiculous. I'm not paying fifty dollars for a pair of underwear. Sorry. No, it's great. And and here's the deal. So you go on to uh, MacWeldon.com because they they value their loyalty customers. Um, that's why they've created the loyal the the Weldon Blue loyalty program. Here's how it works: create an account totally free, place an order for any amount, whatever you want, and you never pay for shipping again. So that way, whenever you go back there, <laughs> they're not going to bullshit you with some fucking eighty dollar charge for shipping at the end. That's that's for level one. Level two, once you purchase two hundred dollars worth of products from Mac Weldon, not only will you continue to receive receive the free shipping, but you will also start saving twenty percent on every order you make 
over the next year. And it also grants you access to new products before they release to anyone else, as well as free gifts uh, added to future orders. Yeah. I Man. mean, if, if you're wearing, uh, if you have to wear a certain type of sock or an undershirt mm -hmm. on a frequent basis, personally, I throw them away. Y yeah. Like after a number of uses, because, you know, there's no way to keep these things clean, even if they're super nice. Yeah. I, look, this is one of those companies, man. All the shit is comfortable. It all mm -hmm. fits great. Uh, you don't have to worry about the sizing on it. Go to MacWeldon.com, promo code DRINKINGBROS, for 20% off your first order. The T-shirts, what everybody talks about. Everybody gets those fucking T-shirts, mm -hmm. man. They're so goddamn comfortable. I got the button down. It's on the way. So I'll wear it on the show and let you know uh, all of my thoughts on it. <laughs> but uh, my friends have been ha using it for years. And, and it, again, it was another company we re reached out to. We're like, hey, man, can we get a fucking promo code? Yeah. They've got nice joggers and sweatpants and shit, too. Yeah, like, man. Board shorts. They had all kinds of stuff. Super yes. comfortable. Go to MacWeldon.com, promo code Drinking Bros for 20% off. Last but not least, we've got GetRoman.com forward slash Drinking Bros. Boner pills. That's right. Did you just give a finger boner to me? Yeah. You did. It started off at like a semi. Whoop. Whoop. Oh, there it is. There it is. Look, kids, everybody's stuck indoors for the quarantine. We've all tried out every sexual position we could possibly try at this point. It's time to bring in the reinforcements. Roman comes in a discreet package, gets shipped right to your house. Who cares if your kids are there, your in-laws, no matter who's there, they won't know. It just says Roman on the fucking package. Nobody knows what it is. It doesn't say anything on it. Uh, it doesn't even say that, actually. It, I, it's like some other company. Yeah, it's like a, it's, it's like a blue package. Yeah. 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 yeah it's the best. Uh, and these are for, look, you can get a recreational boner or if you need it. Uh, congratulations. Mm -hmm. No doctor <laughs> visits on there. You just go to getroman.com forward slash drinking bros. Fill out a, a little five questionnaire thing for the doctor, mm -hmm. and that's it. Boom. You get boner pills shipped to you within 48 hours to your house. You're good to go. There's a reason why Roman has taken down Viagra in the marketplace. It's because they ship this shit right to your house in 48 hours. Go to GetRoman.com forward slash drinking bros today and get some boner pills in your life, dude. Uh, we love them. We love I'm a, I'm we a big, love, fan. big fan. Yeah. Big fan of Roman. Uh, Jamie, why don't you uh, slide us into the show with uh, Mr. Chris Ballard, shall we? There we go. There it is. There it is. That was, hey, that's my fault, fellas, for being late. I deserve, I deserve to get punished. <laughs> <laughs> and we will, obviously, we will. That's all, that's all right. I'm used to getting kicked in the teeth. It's all right. <laughs> How you doing? Good to see you. Great to see you, man. And we appreciate you being on the yeah. show. How, isn't it funny how life works? I go to watch LSU and Oklahoma play, and I sit right next to you, uh, you and your son at the game. It was it, it was amazing. It was amazing. Yeah, that, I'll tell you, it's um, it's one of the, you know, because I've got five kids, so I just thought it was really cool when I see a dad with his son at a, you know, checking out a game, a college football game, man. I just I thought that was really cool, you know, you to do and good for your son, man. That that creates lasting memories. It's gonna. It's going to go a long way with him when he gets older. You know, it's funny, man. He still brings it up to this day. Um, you, you know, us being at that game. And he was just like, it, it was the best time ever, even though he doesn't know what's going on. I've uh, been taking other people's kids to games. And <laughs> I've been a, I've been asked to stop. I don't know what the problem is, to be honest. I'm just trying to be hey, a good well, guy. Well, now, look, hey, you got a free invitation. I got five children. Um, anytime during this time, you're more than welcome to come yeah. on over. After kid, um, after kid two, it's just like, just take them. Get them out of here. Take them. Get them out of here. <laughs> Take him. Give him we might as well just leave this in, Chris. Uh, we get Chris Ballard on the show, the GM of the Indianapolis Colts. Monster oh, draft. Thanks for having me. Monster draft, uh, Mr. Ballard. Holy shit. Um, I, mean, I know everybody's been saying that to you, but uh, did you expect to get the haul you got in this, this year's draft? You know, we um... – it's funny because we debated back and forth. You know, we, we wanted to add offense. I mean, as you know, you can see from the first two picks, I mean, one of the big objectives was to add offensively and add some weapons offensively that can, you know, help us create more. I mean, um, and we think we're able to do that. And, and to come out of it with Pittman and Taylor, um, we were pretty excited. When we saw Detroit, you know, when they took Swift from Georgia, who's a good player, mm -hmm. um, you know, just looking in front of us, I said, man, we got a real shot 
um, to get Taylor now. And then when he got close, I said, nothing would, it would be nothing worse than if we didn't get him now. So let's go, let's move up and make sure we get the player that we all like. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, you and I had chatted again at that LSU Oklahoma game and you're a Wisconsin guy. So nobody knows more about Jonathan Taylor than you probably, because you're you're also a fan in real life of your of your college, <laughs> as am I. Um, you know, you and I chatted about that at length. You know, it's funny. It's the first player we've taken uh, since I've been here. You know, and this is my fourth draft. It's the first one we've taken from Wisconsin, and the guys beat me up in the freaking draft room all the time <laughs> about being a Wisconsin homer, always putting guys higher yep. um, than where they probably should be, just because you're a fan of the of the team. But Jonathan, uh, I just know that his freshman year. I'd, I'd gone into the school in October at some point, and Paul, the head coach who I played with in college, he was a senior when I was a freshman. He he said, Chris, he goes, we got a back, a freshman back that is real deal good um, that you're going to watch here for the next three years play. He goes, I think he's going to break every record, um, you know, that's ever been set here. He goes, he is really special, not only as a player, uh, but what he stands for off the field. He goes, this guy stands for all the right stuff. He works. He's a great teammate. Um, just kind of fit everything that we were looking for. So feel fortunate to have him. And look, like any, like like the one thing that, that always sobers me up is that I always know they got to play. Mm-hmm. Um, that's why I don't give a shit about the draft grades. I never have. I mean, I, when we took Quentin Nelson and Darius Leonard, people said we were stupid. Um, so I think you got to let it play out. I'm always, you know, I'm always pretty sober after the draft. Okay. Now they got to perform. Um, and a lot goes into that. Um, but we think these two kids are made of the right stuff and, uh, will be good players for us. Yeah. It's funny that you said you were sober during the draft because I'm imagining Jim Ursay probably isn't. Um, (laughs) no, he's great, man. He's great. I'm going to tell you, he was the big pushing. Like when Jim gets his eyes set on something, I remember him. You know, during, you know, when, when Taylor started getting close, I could just hear him and, it, you know, we're all on this Zoom call. We got the whole group on the Zoom call and he's like, Chris, you've been, y'all been talking about this guy for the last two weeks. I don't just go get him. And I'm like, go get him. Let's go get him. So he's, uh, you know, what's great about Jim is that, you know, he's been, a, he's sat in my chair, you know, he's been a GM. Mm. Um, he's, he's done the job before. Um, and he's got, a, I mean, like he's done everything. He's worked in the equipment room. Um, you know, he grew up when his dad, when his dad was the owner and he was working as a kid in the equipment room. And then he became the GM one day Then Mm -hmm. he became the youngest owner in football. He's got great stories and experience, um, with everything you do. Um, and you know, it's thankfully, it's good to have an owner like that because he knows what he's looking at on Sunday. You know, when things don't quite go your way, he's not in panic mode because he understands what's happened. So are you saying that the Dallas Cowboys would be better if Jerry Jones had coached and general managed that team at some point? I'm not saying that. Don't, don't twist them. You can like the media. You can like the real media now. <laughs> yeah, oh, I love shit. it when they ask me loaded questions. I always call it, man, that's a loaded question. Yeah, get, Come on, get fucked it is. I yeah, know, because you, you know behind the scenes more than anybody else oh, yeah. does. I just like that story how he was doing all the draft himself. Yeah, he, he, he told his scouts not to be there. Yeah. Was that was that true? And when you hear something like that as a GM, are you like, holy shit, you believe that? He's sending everybody home? Like, I'm going to do it myself tonight? I think I think Jerry plays more um, that up to the – I know this from guys I know that work there and Will McClay, who I have great respect for. Mm. Um, and I think they've had great drafts here in the last – you know, five or six years, they've really, you know, they've stayed away from free agency. And um, I think Jerry listens more than than people give him credit for. Mm. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that. I mean, they, it's, look, it seems like he's he plays into a little bit, which yeah, I like. I think he's a character. I think yeah. he's made it into a character. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, same with Ursay. Like, I think Ursay is a, a likable dude. And it's like uh, you like, to, in my opinion, you like to see owners having fun uh, who are passionate about their team. It's the others where you sit there and you're like, nah, like the yeah. Morris. I don't know. Any, no, I don't, I don't, know, I don't about know anything guys. about them. I don't know anything about the, what was it? The Maloof brothers that owned the Kings back in the day. Like, oh, the Maloofs partied. They were, they I were partiers. <laughs> yeah. Like I like them. I like, I like, uh, uh, the Mavericks owner, Mark Cuban. Yeah, Mark Cuban. Yeah. Love him. I like, Cuban's Irsay. Good. I, like yeah. Irsay. I like guys. And Jim's great. Jim's you, what you love is, I mean, look, you want somebody that cares and wants to win. Mm-hmm. I mean, 
you know, and he cares about, you know, the product that we're putting on the field. He wants, he, he's as passionate as our fans are about it. Um, and that's what you love about Mr. That's what you love working for him. And he lets you do your job. I mean, mm -hmm. I can't ask for anything more. If I, if we screw it up, then it's on me. I can handle that. Yeah. Speaking of that, you know, when we were at the game, um, privately, and I, I heard this on a radio interview or else I, I never would have re-asked you to be honest, because we usually keep secrets off air behind the, behind the scenes, but you had said you would fuck some things up in the draft. And I know you, you had said that on Pat McAfee's show as well. So I feel okay yeah. asking you about it. Uh, that you would, uh, I'm sorry, fuck some things up in the past regarding the team as far as players, not in this draft, you knocked it out of the park. Um, what were those fuck ups? I'm curious because looking at that team last year, you had, you did as much as you possibly could with Andrew Luck retiring, you know, what seemed like the night before the first game. Uh, and then all the injuries you had mm. to me as a, is a, a fan of the game. I look at your team and I'm like, man, I don't know what else you possibly could have done with that group. Yeah. I look, we'll never make an excuse. I'll never make an excuse. Um, when we don't get it done, it, it, the buck stops with me. And at the end of the, you know, with the hot start we had, um, and you know, we, you know, we start out five and two, we beat Kansas city in Kansas city. Mm -hmm. You know, we beat Tennessee. Who's a really good football team. As it turned out that was the AFC um, championship early in the right season, we had beat Houston. Um, and then we sputtered down the stretch and we just didn't have, we didn't find enough answers, uh, to the problems. And, and that's our job. We got to find answers. Even in season, nobody gives a shit about your problems. They just glad you got them. Right. And, you better find answers. And we, and at the end of the day, I didn't find enough good answers for us to plug when the problem areas happen um, that allowed us to win games down the stretch. And, you know, I accept that. I don't, I don't, I don't shy away from when shit goes bad. Um, we're not going to make an excuse that that's, that's losing football, man. That's, that's, that, that, that cultivates and that folds over into other seasons. If you allow that to happen. Yeah, and I look at some of the moves you made during the offseason. Obviously, Phillip Rivers was the big one for you guys. And um, I think, me personally, I think that's a, a, a massive upgrade from Jacoby Brissett. Not to knock jo Jacoby Brissett in any way. He had, a, he had a pretty good season last year. But to me, I thought you guys, you were our sleeper team on the show to win the Super Bowl <clears throat> last year. Had luck not retired. Um, and I felt, you know, besides the injuries, you were just kind of missing a quarterback and some key pieces here and there. And it seems like you might have had it. Um, I think that you guys could give the Chiefs a run this year. Um, and I'm, I'm going to call it now. I'm going to say Colts Chiefs in the AFC Championship this year. <laughs> well, uh, look, I answered this. <laughs> well, you, it was unique with Phillip just because of the history with Frank and Nick Sirianni, our coordinator. Um, both had coached him. Nick had been with him longer than even Frank. Um, so his knowledge of the offense – um, we still think he can play at a high level. We think what we're going to do offensively is going to fit him um, really well. So it was just a unique opportunity uh, when that guy, you know, hits the street and you got a chance to get a guy that's a future Hall of Famer. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you got to take that. You got to take that shot. Um, and even with the one-year deal that we did, um, we think Phillips got a couple really good years mm -hmm. in him, two or three years in him. Um, but this protects both sides and, you know, we'll see how the season goes. We think it's going to go good. Um, and then having Jacoby with him, make sure that we also have another quarterback on the roster that we know we can win with. Um, you know, when things, you know, it's funny because everybody kind of beats it and, and look, I didn't help this with a couple of dumbass words I said to the media. Um, but you know, people forget that at one point people were talking about Jacoby as the MVP. Yeah. Um, so good football is in Jacoby Brissett. Mm. Um, so we're glad we have him and lucky we got two guys on the roster that, you know, we can win football games with. Well, I mean, now you've got uh, Marlon Mack, Jonathan Taylor, and Naeem Hines. Like, Hines actually caught, almost caught as many passes as he had handoffs this year, yeah. this past year. Like, he's, he's, he's kind of turning into, like, a, what's his name? Uh, not Sony Michelle, the other guy from New England. James White. Yeah, James yeah. White. Yeah. Like, he's kind of played like a James White-style role. Like, they, they roll out there. I mean, but now you got three of these guys. So, I don't I – mean, No, and, and Naheem's and ability to 
Yeah, he's really, I mean, he's done it since his rookie year. Mm. I mean, I think with, when Andrew, that first year when he played, I think Naheem caught almost 70 balls. Yeah, he had like 65 or something receptions. Yeah, yeah. it was crazy. For yeah, a, for a, for a, and yeah. so, and he can, and he can also carry the football. Mm. And then the added value of the punt return that he brings, you know, at the end of the season, we finally put him in and he scored two long touchdowns, mm. you know, two touchdowns against Carolina. Um, so no, having, having Mac and, and Jonathan, you know, kind of as a one, two punch, um, it'll take a little of the workload off of Mac, which I think is going to help Marlon. Um, cause I mean, we all know Marlon's a good back. Um, but you know, to be able to take, kind of have a, a two headed monster. And then mm. I don't want to forget about Wilkins. I mean, Jordan, yeah. Jordan, yeah. I mean, it's going to add competition to the position. I mean, look, nothing, nothing, it, it, you know, I always laugh when people says, well, you know, and even when players will get a little salty when you draft somebody at their position, but I mean, competition brings out the best of everybody. And, you know, Jordan, Jordan's had some moments. I mean, last year versus Tennessee, we go down there and play, and he pops a 60-yard run mm-hmm. um, with about three minutes left in the game to give us, you know, to really put us over the top in that game. So we feel good about the position. Um, you know, last year when Marlon got beat up, um, it, it, I mean, you definitely could you could tell the difference. We had good backs, but, you know, adding Jonathan, um, you know, adds a whole another home run hitter to the group, and that's 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 going to be big for us. Yeah, and speaking of home run hitters, he added another one with wide receiver Michael Pittman out of USC. He's going to be lining up opposite uh, T. Y. Hilton for this upcoming season. And the crazy thing about Michael Michael Pittman is not only is he unbelievably talented, but he had 900 quarterbacks yeah. last year at USC. Yeah, imagine him with a guy like Philip Rivers. That's why I said th- th- I think it's it's you guys and the Chiefs in the AFC Championship well, this year. Don't sleep on Paris Campbell. From I, I will never sleep on Paris Campbell Ohio from State the Ohio State, State I mean, University. He only played seven games last Ooh, year. He, he's like, the he sexiest the player season. you have. Uh, he was great for us. <laughs> he was great for us at Ohio State. I mean, he's a Pittman level guy. I think. I think he him in the slot and and, and Ty and fucking Pittman. Yeah. On the on the ends out there, that's going to be a problem for a it's, lot of people. It's, it's a sexy team yeah. that you have. Um, no, and it's exciting. Like Parrish, it, it's the same because every time he would get going last year, he would, you know, some little unfortunate hamstring. Then he hurt his f- hamstring during training camp, and that took him a while. Then when he got going, um, it was his foot. And then he broke. Then he had a good game versus Pittsburgh. Had a, over 100 yards of offense mm-hmm. against Pittsburgh, and he breaks his hand continues to finish the game um so it was just bad luck all the way through um so we think you know between paris and ty and Pittman, and then you know zach pascal kind of gets lost in the sauce yeah um but zach pascal's a heck of a football player i mean i i think everybody in india knows the way i love zach because just all he does is show up and produce mm-hmm. and do the dirty work each and every week and whatever role we ask Zach to play he plays it and he plays it at a high level um so we feel good about the group and and look T.Y. Hilton T.Y. Hilton's really special um I don't I don't know if I've been around you know pound for pound I always thought Jamal Charles pound for pound was the toughest player I was ever with um I would put T.Y. Hilton right there with him uh, pound for pound that guy shows up and plays and competes um, you know, each and every week. And, you know, we're lucky to have him. Uh, let me ask you about Philip Rivers. Was part of choosing him over somebody like a Cam Newton simply because of the fact of, um, you know, COVID, you're only going to fill up maybe half the stadiums. At least Philip Rivers' kids can take up half of the, that those seats. <laughs> Was that part of it so you knew you would have at least 50 season tickets sold? <laughs> well, and I think he's having one go to college, so we'd be losing one seat out with him going, you know, going in. Think about that. Oh, God that's, bless him. That's crazy. That's, that's, I, got five. That... I got five, and he doubles me up. Yeah, I mean, that's nuts, dude. I've got two. And, like, I, I can't imagine five, <laughs> let, alone, let alone ten. Mm. Philip, I haven't seen his wife, but he's not pulling out for anything. No, yeah, he's no, a gamer. No. Great. He's a gamer through and through. Um, what? Speaking of Cam Newton, what's the sitch with him? Why won't anybody take a flyer on him right now? Um, is there something behind the scenes that we don't know? Not that I'm aware of. I mean, look, I mean, Cam is a. I've always called him Superman. Every time I went and watched the guy play, um, it's incredible. You know, this big athlete. Um, you know, and I thought he really progressed as, you know, as his career has gone on as a pastor. I think a little bit is just timing mm-hmm. um, and, you know, what's going on in the world right now. Uh, eventually, Cam's going to land on his feet and he's going to help somebody. He is a very talented 
talented player. I agree. I, I'm, I'm shocked that he's still out there, especially Andy Dalton got uh, picked as the backup for the Cowboys. Uh, yeah, I was kind of surprised. I was surprised by that one. I, well, I, they I, need a backup. I, th- I thought Dalton was going to go to the Patriots, to be honest. I don't, I don't know. I guess they're all in on their guy there. I guess so. On that Stidham guy, speaking of which, I mean, you've got to be glad that the Patriots dynasty looks like it's dead up there. <laughs> they didn't do anything this well, offseason. Me, Not yet. Let me say this. Nothing's ever – don't forget who that head coach is. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Look, he's the he's, best in the uh, They got a good staff. They, um, they, you know, I think they just – they're playing possum with people right now. I think New England will be better than people think. Um, they are well coached, and they still have talent on the team. So it'll be, be interesting to see. Um, they always figure out ways to, to win, um, no matter what it takes, whether it means, you know, if we're going to chew the clock and, and make it a low scoring game, or we're going to outscore you, they do whatever it takes to, uh, win the game. And I think they probably have as good a coaching staff as there is in the league to try to figure that out. Yeah. I look, I don't doubt the coaching staff and Belichick is the greatest of all time. I, they just looking at that roster just from a, you know, a fan perspective, <clears throat> My God, they didn't do anything. Uh, they didn't bother to go get a quarterback. Uh, their draft wasn't that sexy to me. Um, they, they've never had a sexy draft in the history of that organization, though. No. That's, that's not how they do things. But to yeah. me, they're just so boring. I would, I would love – nothing would warm my heart more than to see, like, Colts Chiefs. Um, even though I'm a Falcons fan, right, uh, I still want to see the best football and the most exciting players on the field at one time that I could possibly see. And between you and the Chiefs – that's kind of the AFC for me next year. Well, let's hope you're right. I mean, there's um, still the Ravens. There's, there. there's absolutely. Yeah, there's still a lot of good teams in in the AFC. I mean, especially. I mean, like I always look at our division. People, I mean, it's all. It's funny because people sleep on our division every year, and I'm, I'm just like, holy crap. I mean, Tennessee goes to the AFC Championship game the year before. Houston, Houston wins a playoff game last year. We won won the year before. I mean. Um, there are some good coaches um, and good personnel uh, in the AFC, you know, South and, and just getting out of this division is hard enough. I always say that's why our teams usually go into the playoffs and do pretty good. Yeah. I look, I like the bills and I like the Ravens, Mm -hmm. um, but then, you know, Colts and chiefs for me in the AFC, the Titans are still tough too. I mean, we'll see what happens with them. Yeah. It's all on Derek Henry. Our teams are very similar. uh, They're built very similar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, And they got a heck of a, their GM's a good friend and, you know, John Robinson's done a heck of a job and Mike Vrabel. I just, yeah, I think he's pretty special. He's a heck of a head coach. Yeah. And and Derek Henry is basically the second coming of Jim Brown. He is a, yeah, he's he's pretty tough to tackle. Monster. I mean, it's, you know, when you see him in person too, you walk out on the field and there's this giant and you're going, that guy plays running back. My Lord. Well, he's six, three, right? (laughs) Six, three at about two fifty five. or so. He looks bigger though. It's, there's something about him in person. Yeah. It just it he looks like the size of a door. It looks like a refrigerator door just got ripped off, and it's like here you're playing against this. Just put a number on his no, back. No, yeah. and the, and the thing about it is like he'll have like eight or nine carries for like 14 yards, mm-hmm. and then next thing you know, carry 10 through 15. All of a sudden he's got 120. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> he just picks away, picks away, then bam, he pops one on you. Um, and then they they're so good offensively, they're so patient with what they do. Um, and he's such a big focal point of it. Um, he sneaks up on you. Well, he I, does, and he and he's he's really. I mean, freak, he's a special player. Linebackers yeah. tackling him. That's one thing. But once he gets into the secondary, man, like good, good he gets to the like, second level, and he's faster than you think. Yeah. You don't you don't think he's moving, but man, he gains once he gets to the second level. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's got breakaway speed. Yeah. I think you know with all the long runs he's made. Uh, he's proven that. And I'm not sure how many of these safeties. I mean, Atwater is not in the league anymore. I don't know how many of these safeties really want to come up and try to tackle that guy. No, I mean, no. that's that's a bad day. <laughs> no, that's, I that's like want to. that's like Bo Jackson style. Bo Jackson was just walking around with. I don't know if Henry's mentality is like this, but Jackson just like wanted to fuck somebody up. Yeah, he's like, you're not hitting me. No, I'm, I'm hitting you, <laughs> yeah, and you're going to feel that. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that's one of those guys you come home from a, a business trip, and if he's inside the bedroom with your wife, you pretty much just have to pick up the TV and pray for the, the rest at that I point. I lie down you know? next to him, but I still <laughs> I turn the TV on still. I'm going to watch TV. I'm not going to interrupt him. Obviously, but, but yeah. you'll let him finish. Yeah. You'll let him finish. <laughs> Do you ever pay attention to Vegas odds at all? Because um, the odds just came out for your over-under for this year. Do you know what they are? 
No, and I don't pay. Uh, I don't pay much attention to that. No, eight and a half wins is what uh, Vegas has you pegged out for the Indianapolis Colts this year. I'm hammering well, the over, that's, me personally. That's better than. That's better than. That's better than eight. It that's is. Good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My beloved Falcons are at six and a half, and I was like, mm. "Come on, man! You think we're a seven and nine team? We'll see what happens with Gurley, right? Well, we might. Yeah, that, that's the thing. You know, we signed Todd Gurley down in Atlanta. Um, are you friends with Dimitrioff at all? The G, the GM of the Falcons. Yeah, I am, and I'm, and I'm, and Dan Quinn. I'm a big fan of mm. Dan Quinn. Um, I think he's a heck of a coach, heck of a program. I mean, I think you saw it the second half of the season. Um, you know, they played. You yeah, know, sometimes we had a good it just doesn't go your way early, and you get going. But look, they got a good program, and you know, I, I think Atlanta is going to be better than people think. Mm -hmm. They're they're they had a good draft. I, I remember texting Thomas afterwards and Dan telling him I said that was a heck of a draft. Um, you know, everybody always feel good when people are kicking me in the in the balls for the draft. I mean, damn, that means we're going to do good. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I thought, you know, we liked all the players they took, um, and they're going to help them. I hope so. I mean, are you one of those guys who's a firm believer in best on the board, no matter what position you need? Because, you know, to me, I am as a fan, but obviously I'm not a GM. I don't look at it the same way. And when I when I looked at so, the Falcons and it came down, they, they had a chance to get CeeDee Lamb. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I understand we have Julio Jones and Calvin Ridley, but CeeDee Lamb was the best player on the board. Um, you know, we got to see him obviously together at Oklahoma, and uh, yeah. the, the kid's special. Why not fire away on him and just try to score fifty-five every game if you're the Falcons? That's always a you know, that's always a great debate. Here's the way I've always looked at it: if you think the guy's going to be special. You never pass up special in the draft. Mm -hmm. um, if it's equal or if it's close, um, you take the need. Um, right. And corner is such a, you know, uh, you don't know how Atlanta had him ranked or how they say everybody sees players differently. Right. Mm -hmm. um, we all see them differently. I mean, somebody might have somebody ranked 10th and we might have him 40th. Um, it's just all in the eye of the beholder. Um, but I've just always had the premise is just don't, I mean, that, I'll never forget when we took Quentin Nelson, uh, people said, how can you take a guard at six? I said, you, you don't pass special up. You don't mm -hmm. pass a guy you think's a generational player. I don't give a shit what position he plays. Um, so that's always been kind of our take on it. Um, but everybody has it ranked differently. Then time proves you're right or wrong, uh, you, know, you know, whether you made the right decision or not. Yeah, because, uh, mm -hmm. you know, from a fan perspective, I I'm, you know, screaming CeeDee Lamb at the television, um, you know, and I wonder how much you pay attention to, like, Mel Kuyper's big board and, like, Todd McShay and those guys, because that is constantly in front of your face as a fan of, like, best on the board, best on the board. Is that – are you – do you guys pay any attention to those guys at all, or, or is it just, hey, man, they're television personalities, they're not on the field, and they don't know shit about football? No, I mean, I, I give them their – do because they work hard at it mm -hmm. but at the end of the day <laughs> our owner hired us to do a job not them right. uh, um, and so we're going to stack it and rank it the way we see it um, and one of the hardest things to do is to shut out the noise like I got to constantly tell our guys I don't care what the outside world thinks of the player I care what we think how does he fit us um, I trust our evaluation um, over what the world thinks and if they if they if they beat us up on the pick, so be it. Um, in time, they're going to prove it right. I always laugh. Remember, I don't know if y'all remember back when Bill Polian selected Edger and James over mm -hmm. Ricky Williams. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it was a firestorm um, <laughs> that they had chosen the wrong guy. You know, how could you do this? Um, and now Edger and James is going in the Hall of Fame. So mm -hmm. I think you just got to let it play <laughs> out um, and watch guys play and, and see how they play. Yeah, and look, uh, you know, Ricky. Ricky's going to the Hall of Fame of weed. So, yeah, uh, he's in, in the High Times Hall of Fame. Yeah, down yeah. in Jamaica. Uh, so he'll be he'll be cutting his own uh, buds right off the branch down there in Jamaica pretty soon. So you know, there's something to say about that as well. But, well, the league's not testing for weed anymore. And no, they're not. So. No, is that a big deal for you guys? Because look, I, we know behind the scenes, we party with all these players. Every NFL player smokes weed. Yeah. Every single one and, of them. And beyond that, I would rather them smoke weed than be on fucking Percocet all day. Same. You know what I mean? Like, over time, if you're going to if you're gonna have uh, an 8- to 12-year career in the NFL and just get destroyed on a daily basis for six to nine months out of the year, yeah. and you're going to be popping pills all the time, or you're going to be doing something. It's one or the other, right? Yeah. I would much rather have dudes using CBD and weed than I would. I mean, just personally. Yeah, well, they've, 
that's good. I mean, they've changed the rules. Um, there still are, there's still testing, um, but it's become a little, it's become a little more laxed, um, you know, here going forward. I mean, with so many states, um, you know, legalizing marijuana, um, the rules will be changed. Be interesting to see how it, you know, you know, how it plays out here going forward. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, in the next election. That's my safe. That's my safe answer. Yeah, it is. I look. We all know behind the scenes. All <laughs> the these un, guys. The are unsafe answer weed. is there's like a huge bong right off camera <laughs> yeah, over there. Exactly. <laughs> I smoked weed with half, half half a team at the last Post Malone concert. Not going to say which team, but um, it was the uh, uh, the Flint Tropics. I exactly. Believe, uh, Exactly. That's good. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think in the, the at the next election cycle, I think they'll pass it on a federal level, and that should change for all sports. Because let's face it, it is not a performance enhancer whatsoever. Unless you're the performance you're doing is to think of stupid shit. Yeah, yeah, during the game. And eat yeah. Doritos. <laughs> like if you if you start seeing wide receivers standing over there and it's like the clipboards at his feet, but he's eating Doritos straight out of the bag, he's probably high. And you know he's high. Yeah. Yeah. You know he's high. Uh, are you friends with the GM of the Tampa Bay Bucks by any chance? Yeah, no, Jason. How? Yeah, Jason's so- uh, known him. We were on the road for a long time. With, with with a guy like that, does he pull off those Brady moves, or is it Brady calling and saying, hey, I'll come and play for the team? Because I remember back when LeBron was going back to Cleveland, um, and uh, and they asked the GM you know, a couple months later, they were like, oh, man, how was that conversation with LeBron? He was like, no, 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 LeBron told us he was coming back. There was no, you know, we didn't have anything to do with that. With Tom Brady, did he pick the Bucks, or was that a hard pitch session, you think? Um, I'm sure, you know, and I don't know any in-depth insight on that other than I'm sure the presence of, you know, they had some, you know, they had a, they finished the season really strong. Mm-hmm. Um, they've definitely got, you know, a, a, you know, been building here for a while and got a good roster and a lot of good weapons offensively. Um, and then the presence of Bruce Arians, mm-hmm. um, who's a hell of a football coach. Um, and it's won everywhere he's gone and runs the heck of a program. So I'm sure all that played into the thinking, um, but not with any inside information of, of why um, he chose there. Um, but I think he, he probably looked at the roster and said, shit, they don't, we can win there, mm-hmm. um, and this will be a good place to go. Yeah, it was just so strange. I mean, even when I see those Photoshop you know, jerseys on Brady right now in a yep. Bucks uniform. It looks foreign to me. It doesn't look any more foreign, though, than uh, Brett Favre in a Jets and Vikings jersey, frankly. I know. Montana, when Montana yeah, went to Kansas Chiefs, City, yeah. you just start thinking of the great players that have, have moved. Um, I'll never forget playing. I was in Chicago scouting for the Bears when, uh, you know, when, when uh, Favre went to Minnesota. Mm-hmm. And... I don't know if everybody remembers, I mean, but freak that one year he freaking lit it up. Yeah, right. I mean, he was one throw he away from the Super Bowl. Unbelievable. Yeah. Um, and you know they ended up losing in the Superdome to New Orleans. Mm-hmm. Um, you know when he threw the pick at the end of the game, but man, he was he was as goody as he was in his career. Uh, when you watched him, you know that season in mm-hmm. Minnesota, he was incredible. Well, New Orleans was just going to win that year. Yeah, like it, it was in they the were, cards. They were they were on it. Now, yeah, they were yeah, they, they were, were they were blessed. But now. I think we they might really be were, seeing and they they went and beat the Colts in the Super Bowl. Yeah, yep. yep. I think we might be seeing uh, far part two here pretty soon. Like I don't, uh, from what I'm hearing, Aaron Rodgers is not happy about them drafting a quarter, like yeah. trading up to draft a quarterback in the first round. So I think maybe we're going to see him move to a new team, but he can't do it until after the end of next season because of the salary cap, right? Yeah. So he's got to stay at least two. Maybe they'll cool off by then. Who knows? Do you think – let me ask you this because you deal with this all the time. Uh, It was like you said at the top of the show, players always get salty when you draft somebody in their position. Is this something that either – that lights a fire under Aaron Rodgers or that's, you know, uh, a a year from now he says, hey, I want to be traded? Um, I – I think Aaron, I mean, and I don't know Aaron personally, but, you know, other than playing against him in our division and watching him freaking rip our ass for, uh, you know, about four years and beat us in the NFC championship game. I mean, I, I mean, the guy's a rare competitor and a rare talent. Um, and I think anytime, uh, you know, when you bring a player into your position, there's going to be some protect, you know, you're going to get into a little bit of protection mode. Um, but uh, look, he's a good teammate. He's going to prepare. Um, and he's going to do the best he can to, to help Green Bay win a lot of games. I mean, he's that, you know, he's one of the top two or three players in our league. Um, so, 
you know, and then his legacy in Green Bay is, you know, the guy won a Super Bowl. He's won a lot of games. He, you know, he's still got a lot of left in the tank. Uh, he'll handle it. He's a pro. I mean, Aaron's a pro. He'll he'll handle that. That's the, and that's what I think as well. Um, where you know, sometimes you need it. You know, you've been playing for the same team forever. Sometimes you need a young guy behind you to say, "All right, cool, man." Let's let's kick it in the ass a little. Yeah, but you know what would also be year. cool is if at any point during his career they had drafted a wide receiver in the first round. <laughs> Not that Devontae Adams isn't a great receiver. He is fucking spectacular. Yeah. But at no point during his career as a starter have they drafted a wide re- an impact wide receiver in the first round. That's true. Has a player ever called you personally and said, hey, Ballard, before you go in there tonight, here's what I'd like to have. Hmm. I'm sorry, no, they players know. I mean, like I tell our team all the time, I said, look, we want to, you got to call BS on me when I don't bring the right type of guy in the building. Um, I don't have a problem with that. Like, I don't have a problem, but never before. Now, sometimes after we've chosen a player, they're like, what the hell are you doing, dude? Mm-hmm. You brought this guy in the building, he ain't good enough, or he's not, you know, he doesn't fit our character mold. Um, but never before. And I'm okay with that. I don't, I don't have a problem with players, you know, voicing their opinion when uh, we haven't done our job good enough to help them win. I mean, at the end of the day, they all want to win because they know that when you win um, that benefits everybody and, you know, and and you got to create, and I have, I have zero issue, uh, but never going in the front end. It's usually on the back end. Why'd you take this guy? Mm. Yeah, it's, it's interesting you say that. I always wondered if, you know, the superstar players ever reached out to you before the draft and kind of gave you a nudge and said, hey, man, it'd be great if we could have so-and-so uh, and maybe put, you know, a couple of emojis at the end of that text message. <laughs> no, it, it's – I've never had that happen. It's always after. You know, once we get a player in the building, if they don't fit – um, or if they're not quite as talented as we thought, you know, I'll get some questions about why and what were you thinking? And, um, but never, I've never had it happen to me before in my career. And that's okay. I mean, no, I'm sure you love it. Questioning, you know, we're trying to win and they want to win. Players want to win. Uh, they want to, you know, they know, uh, winning football and playing in the playoffs is going to help all everybody. And it's going to help them make more money, get them more exposure. Um, so you want, I, I, you know, we want to make them proud. We want to bring a players in that that fit and want to work and have the same goals that they have. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, uh, it's it's one of those things where I guess it's just, you know, you I, like I picture. I feel like if a picture Favre, Mahomes or a Favre just calling and being like, "Hey, yeah. man, I'd really like so and so." I, maybe it's just maybe it's one of those things like an unwritten rule as a player that you just don't do that shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But I feel like there are some rules that certain like LeBron James is the general manager, the coach, and a player on every team he's been on since he's like what twenty six or so. Yeah, like kind of when he when he went to Miami. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I mean, some people that are transcendent, but even with uh, Jordan, as we're seeing in the Last Dance. Phil Jackson exercised extreme control over that team. Even if it was allowing Rodman to go on a fucking bender in Vegas for a couple of days, yeah. he was still in control of the situation. And once Rodman was done, they sent people to grab him and bring him back. Yeah, do you have to do that at all? <laughs> oh, that would be great. Hey, man, this guy's got to go on a three. Coach, hey, I'm going to let this guy go off for three days to Vegas. Yeah. Um, Can you imagine uh, that? Let's hope, let's hope we get him back. <laughs> Well, now you can just say he's going to uh, scout, the scout the Raiders or something, right? Yeah, how do you control that? <laughs> As a GM, how do you control your team in Las Vegas? Yeah, I'm sure you've heard of the Vegas flu before, right? That's got to be a nightmare. Like the Vegas flu means guys came in two days early, they had a practice day, and then they got fucking shit housed all night, and at least in the NBA and uh, NHL. It'll be – look, I think our guys, because our season – um, I mean, it's hard on these players' mm-hmm. bodies, you know, week to week, 16 weeks. I mean, it's one of the great respects I have for players in this league is what it takes to get ready for Sunday. I, I think sometimes it gets overlooked. Um, you know, they they go through this 60-minute game on Sunday, which is freaking hard on the body, and then it really takes them all week. Um, I think there'll be, a you know, a factor at first – you know, because it's new and, you know, you're in a new environment. But I think over time um, with their leadership with, with John and, and Mike, 
uh, you know, they'll lay some ground rules down. That, look, you got to be careful of these situations, and we got to you got to be a pro. I mean, the one thing in our league um, that's that's really clear is that you got to perform. All of us, you know, mm-hmm. head coach, GM, coaches, players, they're gonna you're gonna get fired. I mean, there, there's no. It just, it is what it is. So if you want to choose the nightlife and not play well, then so be it. And you won't be on the team very long. Have you ever run into a guy that's like Rodman? Because according to Phil Jackson, he re- he realized after that incident that Rodman just didn't need to do certain things that other players needed to. He came back on and he flipped a switch and he was on. You know what I mean? That's kind of what Jackson was, Phil Jackson was talking about. He was like, yeah. yeah, it didn't really take away. But I don't know, not, not to uh, diminish what NBA players go through, but I don't think it's the same. I don't either. Football is such a physical sport. I don't know if you could go just party, party, party like that and then step into a game. You know it better than anyone, and I'm sure you've seen guys who've been able to do it, but uh, it just seems like no, it's, it's too tough. punishing. Yeah, It's tough. And look, I don't want to dismiss, you know, an 80 – I mean, with baseball and basketball, you know, 162 games and 82-game seasons, yeah. those are that's, to, that's taxing on the body too. Um, and they're long seasons – um, but they're long, they're 160. You're talking about a bunch of games. Like we got 16 and you know, you flub one up and that's going to cost you a playoff. I mean, mm-hmm. that's going to cost you being in the playoffs. Right. Um, and I think that's one of the great things about the NFL is that, you know, each week, each week matters and it matters on, you know, if you're getting in the playoffs and then where you're seated in the playoffs. And that's such an important element of our league. So I think it's one of the really things that really makes it special. I think that's why so many people are attracted to our regular season games is because something's on the line each and every week. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there's there's only 16. And with that, yes, you have to win week in and week out. And if you lose, I mean, it's it's tough to recover where you're like, all right, great. Then now we've got to go, you know, essentially the magic number is 10. Uh, and it's you lose one of those games, you just keep knocking away all the way down the board. The schedule's supposed to come out Thursday night at 8. Do you pay attention to that at all? Well, I know who we're playing. I yep. don't care when we play them. I mean, <laughs> I know when I know the teams already were playing. Right. Um, and now it's just a matter of how do they – you always look for, all right, are they going to – you know, what are the road games? Um, how are they stacked? When are the division games? How yeah. are we getting stacked there? Um, those are the things that I look for. You know, do we have – all of a sudden you look up and you have three road games in a row. How are we going to navigate that? Do we have to be on the West Coast for a certain amount of time? How are we going to navigate that? Those are the things I pay attention to. I already know who we're playing. Um, that doesn't – just tell me when and tell me how we navigate the schedule and uh, things that we need to be prepared for. Yeah, I just wondered if you guys sit around at that 8 o'clock, you know, ESPN drop and be like, all right, cool. Now this is the exact schedule. Let's try to plan – for X um, because the, the look Vegas already has their ratings out as well. Um, and they've got you guys. I hate to say this and you're going to, you're going to say, fuck you, but the Colts are listed. Number one is the easiest schedule in the NFL next year. Well, that changes that, that, can, um, that can. as soon as, as soon as the season gets started, that changes. I don't see how um, that can possibly be true though, with the division you're in. Like, how is that possible? No, I mean, no, exactly. I mean, no. And we're, we're in a play. really good – it's a really good division. Yeah, you got to play Houston um, and, and, and Tennessee you're right. twice. I mean, each. you just – I know. And then we're playing – you know, we're playing, you know, Green Bay. Yep. We're playing Chicago. We're playing Minnesota. You know, you're playing Detroit. So, um, no, I mean, look, you don't know. I mean, just because a team was down the year before, I mean, they could – look at Frisco. You know, do you yeah. think everybody looked at their coming off the season they had the year before when they were drafted second and said, oh, boy, we got Frisco on the roster. I did. You know, on the schedule. I called Yeah, down. I mean, I, I just – you can't – every team's good in this league. There's – there's uh, every team can win at any time uh, in the NFL. So – you got to get you got to get locked and loaded for each right. and every one of these games. They're hard. I mean, it's the, hard to freaking win in this league. But the, you said the, you said Houston twice. I'm going to stop you on this one. Um, they, they had the weirdest off season I've seen for an NFL team <laughs> in a very long time. I don't know how you get rid of one of the the greatest wide receivers in football, DeAndre Hopkins, uh, and then replace him with. Brandon Cooks. Well, Will Fuller and Brandon Cooks and Kenny Stills, who they brought over. Fuller was already there. And Those they guys Kenny have Stills been over. there. Fuller and Stills have been there. But and they you got, still have Randall Cobb there, too. How is how is Cooks an upgrade from Hopkins is what I don't understand. Uh, I'm fine with the David Johnson trade. I, I think he could reinvent himself in a new city. Um, but for 
DeAndre Hopkins, that seemed like a little much for me. Well, I'll say this. Um, you know, Deshaun Watson, every time you line up against Houston, mm-hmm. um, you freaking hold your breath. Now, it doesn't. I mean, look, I mean, are we glad Hopkins is out of the division? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Hopkins is a hell of a player, but Billy and them have a plan of what they want to do and how they want to do it. Looks to me like they put a bunch of freaking speedsters around yeah. Deshaun. And, you know, one of Deshaun's great ability is his ability to create. You know, when he gets out of the pocket, um, he, I mean, he's dangerous in the pocket, but when he gets out, he is really freaking dangerous. Yeah. Um, and, you know, if you kind of look at Kansas City, what they've done with their receiver group with all the speed they have and, you know, with Mahomes' ability to extend plays, um, when you got that speed on the field, it's hard to stay, you know, covered uh, when you can run that way. Mm-hmm. Um, so anytime Houston lines up with Deshaun, uh, they got a chance to win. He's pretty special. Pretty special player, man. He's Anthony a great dude, quarterback. He, he plays the game the right yeah, way. He's yeah. He's he's a fantastic you, quarterback. Do you ever shit talk any Chiefs fans? Like, hey, you know Kelsey and and Tyreek Hill. Those were my those were my picks. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome for that. They were ours. All of us. All those guys were ours, man. I mean, the whole group picked them. Um, they've done a heck of a job. I mean, getting Mahomes. Just stir the yeah. drink, man. Freak. He's that dude's good. And then you combine him with Ant with Coach Reed, mm-hmm. who's special. Yeah. yeah. Andy who can dial it up and find mismatches. At some point, <laughs> I don't know if I've ever seen a coach who works as hard as Coach Reed does finding your weakness. And then eventually he's gonna exploit it. He's gonna find it and he's gonna exploit it at some point in the game. Um, and you gotta be prepared for it, man. He's a and then putting Mahomes with him makes him awful tough to defend. So and what's, now, what's your now str- they added Hilaire yeah, at the Hilaire end of the, too, the yeah. first round. And I was like, my <laughs> yeah. God, yeah. man, yeah. the rich got richer. I wonder that. what's your strategy against a team like that and a coach like that who's, uh, you know, I mean, obviously the coaches and uh, coordinators make more decisions on that behalf. But, like, as far as building the team, where do you start with that? Because you're not going to – honestly, you're not going to go out in the draft and find another Mahomes probably unless you draft like Lawrence next year, at least talent level, not the same type of player, but mm-hmm. talent level. Yeah. I mean, very rarely are you going to be able to go into a draft and find a guy like Mahomes and then pair him up with Kelsey Hardman and Tyreek Hill. You'd have a better Hilaire. chance at resurrecting Jesus yeah. on a, on a, on another <laughs> Easter Sunday yeah. than finding him a Mahomes. Well, Easter I mean, was canceled this year, so it was it was COVID. Thanks a lot, China. Yeah, COVID got Jesus this year, <laughs> but Bunch of uh, assholes. Yeah, it's it's crazy, right? You, I don't know if you do. You just you play the way you play. Yeah. Um, yeah. Play the game. I mean, and you do everything to not let him be on the freaking field. You know, keep the mm. ball on offense and don't let him have shots at it. So it's like um, people who said back in the day, you you don't want to try to outshoot the the Golden State Warriors. Like you're not going to outshoot Steph Clay and KD. So yeah. It's not going to happen. So just try to it lock, makes it tough. And that's a great up. to me. That's a great comparison. Uh, you know, if you if you get into a track meet with them, it, you got to be prepared to score every possession, yeah. um, and that's that's tough to freaking do. And I think I think in the playoffs you saw it. Um, I mean, holy crap, they got behind twice by double digits, yeah. and just eat those leads up like it. What they weren't even there. But that was very Warriors one point, style stuff. One, one game I'm watching, I'm thinking they're they're not going to come back from this, and they they tied the score up in like four minutes. Yeah, that twenty four I mean, to nothing game against Houston. Yeah. Yeah, you you get into a track meet with them now. You, yeah, I don't. You better have a buff. You better have enough speedsters to be able to score with them. It's tough. They make it very tough on you. I don't know how you keep up with that. I don't know if it's possible. No, I, I, I'll say this: you guys have you guys have done a good job with it. Yeah. Um, Buffalo, it seems like went the other way, where they're just loading up on defense, hoping yeah. their defense is going to be great enough. I mean, honestly, that's what the Ravens' plan was. I don't think even they expected Lamar Jackson to be that good. No, I, I certainly didn't. Did you? Did you look at Lamar Jackson and said that's that's a starting quarterback in the NFL? No, I can't sit here and say that I knew Lamar was going to be what he is today. I just know that every time and give give the freaking give Baltimore credit. Yeah. I mean, they had a vision for the, I mean, that's what you, anytime you draft a player, you want to have a vision and you know, the personnel staff can have a vision, um, but your coaching staff needs to have the same vision. And they had a great vision for how I mean, he was a unique player. And he was, every time I went and saw Lamar Jackson play, he was the freaking best player on the field. I saw mm-hmm. him play against Clemson. Mm-hmm. Um, I saw him play against BC one year. And every time I saw him play, he was the best damn guy on the field. 
and they had a vision how to make it go and good for them. I mean, that's what good organizations do. They, they draft unique talents and then they find ways to use them and make them work. And they've done a hell of a job with Lamar and to Lamar's credit, um, He's taking steps and he's going to take another step. I mean, he's another one you got to defend. I mean, that's where where you look at the evolution of if you just look at the AFC, um, you know, you've got, you know, you got Deshaun, you've got Pat Mahomes, you've got Lamar Jackson, you got Allen in Buffalo. All these guys can run and make make plays outside of the pocket. Um, and you've got to be able to match that defensively with speed and athletes. Um, and I think that's, that's, you know, in the FCS, I really believe that's where you see it going. Yeah, I, I agree. It's going to be fun to watch this year if there is football. So inevitably, uh, is there going to be a full season this year? And is it going to start on time? Um, you know, you know, that's something we'll take the league's direction, but you know, all indications we're going to play, um, how we do it and when we do it, I don't know exactly details of anything um but i think the nfl draft just showed us that one people want to watch um they had a ton of people watch the you know the nfl draft mm-hmm. and i give the league office <laughs> credit you know they they had a vision for it and they pulled it off um and i think we'll find a way to play football too great i i hope so i i certainly hope so this is the point in the show where we get to the drinking bro of the week which is someone who's inspired you or helped you become the man you are today. Who would you like to give the drink and bro of the week to? Um, oh look, I've been, well, I have been fortunate um, to be influenced by a lot of great people um, from, you know, Jerry Angelo, who was my first boss um, who hired me. Um, but a good one would be Barry Alvarez. Um, ah, who I, who I think Wisconsin. recovering from a knee, recovering from a knee surgery or a little knee thing he had going on. Um, he had tremendous influence, um, on, you know, where I am today. Um, and you know, kind of what I stand for and fortunate that, uh, you know, that I was able to, to be around him the three years I was at university of Wisconsin. That's amazing. Is he he's, still the athletic director there? Yeah, he's still the AD. Yeah. He is? Yes, he oh. is. Yeah. Yes, he is. I used great. to live in Madison, by the way, it's a great town. It's unbelievable. I had a lot of fun there. Can, you, can we go back? Can we go back to our oh, college days? Oh, my God, dude. <laughs> all of us. If there, we could all go back, there's a, there's a the rest, greatest thing of all time. There's a restaurant right near uh, main campus that uh, on Tuesday nights after 7 p.m. you get free baskets of bacon. Really? Unlimited free bacon. In Wisconsin? In Madison, yeah. Uh, of course. And of there's, course another, there's another one in Milwaukee as well, but there's one in Madison that all the college kids go to. It's dope. <laughs> My wife always says to me, Chris, she goes, dude, if I offered you the chance to go back between this moment in your life with a wife and two kids versus then, I know you'd be out the door in 10 seconds. And I was like, <laughs> you're right. I love you. That's how I know. Right. That's how I know time machines don't exist. Oh, yeah. Because if they did, us 10 years from now, oh, we'd, we'd, be, we'd all be back in college. Everybody. <laughs> Maybe I'll be in a sprint, in a sprint. <laughs> Chris, thanks for being on the show, man. You're a hell oh, of man, a guy, great. and you're a hell of an interview, man. A- a- any thoughts of – I could see you doing ESPN later on down the road. Mm-hmm. Any thoughts of getting into uh, into the booth at all? Absolutely not. Way too much really? thinking. I, I'm always thinking about don't say something stupid. If they let me go on the air for too long, something really stupid would come out of my mouth. Y'all, hey, these, y'all's jobs are harder – uh, then people uh, make them out to be. I don't. I don't think I could prepare for this every day. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm telling you, he's good. He's I, good. I mean, look. Here's the beauty of podcasts: is we can do and say whatever the fuck we want. Yeah, McAfee. <laughs> Ma- I'm sure McAfee told you that. McAfee I get them to edit my that. stuff all the time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, we're all good. McAfee just says whatever he wants. He never gets in trouble. Well, if he called you, if he called you tomorrow and said, "Hey, man, I I want to punt for the Colts," would you would you have him back? Um, oh, we've had this, this, Pat and I've had this discussion every time he was, he, he always, he, last year he asked me, he goes, Hey, cause he was, he goes, I was thinking about coaching. I mean, uh, punting and kicking, going out for the kicking thing for the bears. I said, no, you weren't. I said, cause one, I got your rights and two, they'd have to trade for your ass for us to be able to do that. What's the <laughs> least amount you would take in a trade for Pat McAfee? Like a soda I told machine? Him first. 
I told him a one. A They're one? gonna give my ass a one. Really? A one for Matt? <laughs> for the lock for the locker room presence, obviously. Yeah, yeah. obviously. Yeah, he'll keep it pumped up. I love Pat. <laughs> He's the best, man. <laughs> so are you. Thank yeah. you for being on Drinking Bros. All right, today. boys. Thank y'all. Enjoy Appreciate your family it, and have a great season this year. Y'all too. Good luck, okay? Right. Thanks, thank buddy. you, sir. All right, brother. Bye, buddy. Yeah.